Cyberdark Impact was released on November 25th, 2006. Notable cards in this set include Snipe Hunter, Vanity Sphine, The Barrier Statues, Instant Fusion, Black Horn of Heaven, and Chain Strike. Additionally, a new ban list was released on September 1st, 2006. Chaos Sorcerer, Thousand Eyes Restrict, Tsukiyomi, and Snatch Steel were all now banned from sanctioned tournament play. Magician of Faith, Spirit Reaper, Future Fusion, Nobleman of Crossout, Gravity Bind, Ring of Destruction, and Ultimate Offering were all now limited to one copy each. Exiled Force, Giant Trunade, Reckless Greed, and Wall of Revealing Light were all now semi-limited to two copies per deck. And finally, Reflect Bounder, Emergency Provisions, Lightning Vortex, and Drop Off were all now unlimited to three copies. What's fascinating about this time is that Cyberstein also appears as a banned card on the September 2006 ban list. However, Cyberstein was actually legal up until December of 2006, but after winning a Shonen Jump Championship in its Stein OTK form, it was the first ever emergency banned card in the Yu-Gi-Oh! trading card game. In this series, both MBT and myself will be traversing the sands of Yu-Gi-Oh!'s history. Each episode will take a deep dive into Yu-Gi-Oh!'s past formats and unlock new strategies as new sets become available. Strap yourselves in because anything is possible. Welcome to the history of Yu-Gi-Oh! Did you miss me? This is probably the first you're seeing of me in a little while. I've been a cryptid these past couple of weeks. Well, don't worry, by the time this goes up, I'll be done with all of my other obligations and you can all go back to yelling at me on Twitter about how badly I played this week of History of Yu-Gi-Oh. That said, you can't say it about last week because we won, baby! And we did it in an absolutely easy fashion, made it look like clockwork! This is what happens when we're allowed to play a deck that's actually good. Today we have a very interesting format for you. We've got not only Cyberdark Impact, but also a new ban list. However, as Alex has probably already explained, there is one card that is not found on that ban list. Cyberstein was emergency banned in December of 2006. In the interim between the ban list and the e-ban list, there are a bunch of people who basically all figured out at the same time that Cyberstein is head and shoulders more powerful than anything else you could be doing. As a result, on the wheel today we've got a ton of decks that are abusing this card, either as an I win button out of nowhere, like Stein Monarch or Stein Apprentice Monarch, or as its main game plan, like Stein OTK. There are also some decks on here that try to take advantage of the fact that you're artificially decreasing your life points with Cyberstein, like Chainburn. Truth be told, that's what I'm hoping to roll. Realistically, I think it's very possible that Alex will roll whatever Monarch deck that he desires, go for a Stein play, and then side it out in games two and three if I pick Chainburn. Burn. So we're looking for something with a lot of survivability. I think warrior control is the safest bet, but it's going to be really hard for me to pass up Jank. All right, let's get rolling. Ooh, wow. Oh, boy. I can't. So Macro Control is a deck that uses Macro Cosmos and Dimensional Fissure alongside DD Survivor to put up some impressive boards, but it's just not good yet. It's so dang close. Oh, but then again, it's so funny. All right. I'm gonna do it. I don't have much to say. I 100% deserve to be wearing this after last week's performance because that was abysmal. And I really wanted to get that three-peat, but here we are once again. Now, things are gonna get very spicy here because I actually made a mistake. I thought Cyberstein was going to get banned on the next ban list, but it doesn't because there was actually an emergency ban list that disposes of Cyberstein later on. And so Cyberstein's still legal and actually now heralds in the era of Stein Monarch format, people started to realize all of a sudden that Cyberstein is very tutorable and it's a way to win the game out of nowhere, whether you're playing an aggro deck or a control deck, and as a result of the changes on the newest ban list, taking care of Chaos Sorcerer, making return decks not as good as they used to be, everyone seemed to pivot in this direction, and the wheel we have for today showcases this quite well. We have Stein Monarch at the front here, Stein Apprentice Monarch, this is actually a deck I believe that took first place at one of the SJCs around this time, Warrior Control, this does play I think a couple copies of 
Zaborg, but Exiled Force does come back to two now, so Warrior decks had a little bit of a resurgence. It doesn't have as much of an emphasis on Monarchs, but more so just controlling the board. I think it even plays stuff such as Creature Swap as well. Dark World actually has several SJC tops around this time, and the decks are very similar to something that Joseph piloted before. Well, they're not exactly pure Dark World decks. They have a lot of good stuff, but you're just playing the Golds and the Silvas, because A, they detract from the cards that are going to rip cards out of the opponent's hand, such as Thestalos and Spirit Reaper, and B, it's just nice to have the gigantic beaters. Macro Control has made its way onto the wheel. This is a deck that Joseph and I have really been wanting to play since Enemy of Justice, because back then, when Chaos Return was going on, it was bad to banish your opponent's monsters, but now that we have this new format, this deck is actually able to shine, and I think one of us would really like to show this deck off. We also have Chain Burn on the wheel as well. This deck was actually viable during this time, because think, everyone's paying 5,000 life points to activate Cyberstein left and right, which means they only have 3,000 left, and that is pittance for Chain Burn to be able to clean up games. This deck actually had multiple tops around this time, and was an interesting anti-meta sort of strategy since everyone was on Cyberstein. And then finally, Cyberstein OTK itself. This deck is primarily just focused on doing the big Megamorph combos, giant trunating everything away, and just winning games as fast as possible with Cyberstein. They're not as well-rounded as the other decks, but it did get first place and is probably the reason that Cyberstein did ultimately get banned only two days after winning this SJC. So we have a couple of spins that we can go ahead and use here. So let's go ahead and see what we get. We have three in total. Let's see what our first spin looks like. I'm not going to lie. I just want to play straight up Stein Monarch. So let's do it. So here's the... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. It just. Oh, this is so bad. The immortal of thunder. Oh, God. I, I want to take this seriously. I want to get a win streak going, but I could not pass up the opportunity to play macro and. Here's the deck. <laughs> Here's Macro Cosmos. So this is Kirk Leonard's top eight deck from SJC Anaheim 2006. This did make top eight. Your guess is as good as mine. And, uh, you know, let's just roll through the cards. No reason to, uh, to delay anything. I guess the thesis behind the deck is that a lot of these decks, uh, things like Apprentice Monarch, uh, things that are using Sangan to search Cyberstein, they rely on the graveyard. So as long as you're playing a deck that does similar things, but is also playing three-dimensional Fissure and one Macro Cosmos, so maybe you can go over the top of them. So we've got some pretty normal stuff here in the main deck. Three Banisher of Radiance. This, of course, is the best of the cards that banish because it also attacks. We've got Bazoo the Soul Eater. Uh, this one's kind of weird. I understand why they only have it at one, for example. Uh, it gets bigger by banishing cards from your graveyard, and you ideally won't have any, but realistically probably will. Break of the Magical Warrior, still at one. Two Cyber Dragon, a DD Assailant. Two DD Scout Plane. This is just bad DD Survivor. Uh, DD Survivor is good DD Survivor. Um, during the end phase, if it was banished while face up on your side of the field. You get to special summon it to your side of the field. We've got DD Warrior Lady. We've got Magician of Faith. We've got Mobius. We've got Morphing Jar. We've got the, the Immortal of Thunder. So the idea behind this card is that it increases your life points by 3k, and then when it's sent from the field to the graveyard, you lose 5. If you've got a Dim Fizz up, it's never going to the graveyard, is it? It's actually just going straight to the banished pile, and you won't lose all those life points. Uh, you should tribute it off for something like a Zaborg, our next card, while you have the ability to. Uh, it's Is it bad? Yeah, it's it's very bad, in fact, but I'm playing it regardless because it's funny. We've got two big bang shot. This is kind of a macro. Um, it lets you pierce, and it gives a monster. 400 attack, but importantly, if the monster it's equipped to leaves the field, you get to banish that monster. So it's a great way to get monsters that you want in the banished zone a little bit powered up like DD Survivor while not relying totally on something like Dim Fizz. Uh, you can also return it to your hand with something like Giant Trunade, which we have. We've got Book of Moon, we've got Creature Swap, we've got three Dim Fizz, we've got two Enemy Controller. This will come in very handy with a whole bunch of DD Survivors. It's kind of Treeborn Frog. We've got Double a Giant Trunade, we've got a Graceful Charity, a Heavy Storm, a Level Limit Area B, a Reinforcement of the Army, a Scapegoat of Swords, one Macro, Bro, that weirded me out. One mirror force, one return. Also strange. One ring of destruction and one torrential tribute. I don't know what's happening in the board. I could not tell you what's happening in the board. 
We've got Bazoo, we've got Stein, we've got Demok, we've got Zaluke, we've got Granadora, we've got Jinzo, we've got Immortal. We've got Lightning, Vortex, Mystical Space, Typhoon, Reinforcement, the Army, Ceasefire, Gravity, Bind, Magical Cylinder, two Aboku. So I think out of the board, we'll have a competent deck. We put in the Bazoo, we put in the Cyberstein, we put in the Don Zelug and another reinforcement of the army. And then maybe we've got a little bit of a banish oriented warrior toolbox deck going. I don't understand what is the, what is the point of the main deck. I guess we're gonna find out. <laughs> <laughs> Alright you guys, so this is the deck we are bringing to today's duel. This is a top 4 list from SJC Anaheim, which I believe was in November, right before the December where the Cyberstein got banned. So we're going to go ahead and quickly do the card by card. So first up, Breaker for Generic Spell and Trap Removal. 3 Cydra because it's Monarch and Cyber Dragon is still insane. The one copy of Cyberstein, you only have one of this because you can tutor it through so many different means. You have Mystic Tomato because it's a Dark. Sangan can search it. Last Will is incredible in a Monarch deck because you can sack over something with with like a Zaborg or a Mobius, clear the way, and then you can last will into Cyberstein and win the game automatically from there. One DD Warrior Lady, three copies of Dekoichi, one Don Zalug. We are playing a little bit of a Warrior Monarch deck here as well, which I kind of like. This can also get fetched off of Tomato, which is very lethal. Two copies of Exiled Force. This is actually semi-limited now and a great tool for removal. One Magician of Faith, one Mobius, two Mystic Tomato, one Sangen, one Spirit Reaper, the newly limited, so now Reaper format is officially no more. We have one Treeborn Frog and three copies of Zaborg. You're going to be seeing this a lot in the next several episodes. For the spells, one Book of Moon, Confiscation, two copies of Creature Swap. We have actually have a lot of cards that we don't mind giving over to Joseph. We can give him a Tomato, a Sangan, a Treeborn Frog. Uh, we can even give him a Stein after we use the effect, and that way we just can take one of his big monsters and maybe close the gap to get that remaining damage in. Because remember, Cyber Twin's only able to deal 5,600 at most, but typically that will be enough. Graceful Charity, Heavy Storm, Last Will, Mystical Space Typhoon, one Nobleman of Crossout, I believe this card is now limited once again. It was semi previously, and so I think it is now back to one. Avarice to refuel our hand. Premature Burial, one reinforcement of the army to tutor all the different warriors we are playing up here. One Scapegoat and one Smashing Ground. For the Traps, Mirror Force, Ring of Destruction, the newly unbanned. This is actually one of the few ways you can stop Cyberstein, so that's pretty important. Three copies of Sakuretsu Armor and a Torrential Tribute. This is a 42 card list, so that isn't a mistake. I figured I'd try to keep it as pure as possible. The extra deck is a bunch of cards we could summon off of Cyberstein but primarily it's going to be Cyber Twin. You maybe see Cyber End depending on if Joseph has a set monster we want to get the piercing in because 4,000 with piercing could definitely matter. The side deck, one Asura Priest if we're playing against a slower deck, one DD Assailant because it is searchable. It's another piece of removal. Two copies of Death's Wombat in case Joseph decides to troll us and play Chain Burn. One Jinzo for the same reason. One copy of Karibo if Joseph is on a Stein Shenanigans deck. This was a viable way to actually not get killed because it is searchable via Sangen and people did actually side deck this back in the day. A second copy of Mobius to complement the one already in the main deck if we're going up against a back row heavy strategy. One Mystic Swords in level two to deal with set monsters by making it so that they get destroyed automatically. It's also searchable via reinforcement of the army. One new Doria to get off of our Mystic Tomato, an enemy controller, a second Smashing Ground, Call the Haunted, Double Royal Decree, and Wabaku as our insurance against Stein deck. So a nice well-rounded list. I'm really curious to see how this one plays out, but ladies and gentlemen, it's time to duel. Joseph, this is actually sort of a bittersweet moment. Uh, for people who watch the progression series are already going to know where this is going. Uh, you should also be watching that anyway, so be sure to watch it. But uh, this is actually the last episode of the history of Yu-Gi-Oh that I'll be filming in this very set. I'm actually moving, so it's kind of sentimental. You know, this is where it all kind of came to be initially. And, uh, you know, obviously good, better things are on the horizon, but uh, it's, uh, you know, I, I'm still in the shirt of shame, so it's not all great, but yeah, it's it's kind of sad. I mean, that's, um, wow, that's really touching. I apologize that I'm going to have to beat your ass uh, <laughs> for the final episode in your current settings. <laughs> if you think I'm holding back because you're moving, you're wrong. Not at all. Not That's why I lost the last episode. I had too much yeah, going on, but now every we're in much better situation now where I'm going to have my full focus and attention here. I say this and then I'm going to still play like shit. Just watch. Oh, yeah, <laughs> we'll ready. see. We'll see. This is going to be interesting, though. I'm very excited to see the last of Cyberstein before it gets emergency banned. The first ever emergency banned card. And uh, judging by your sleeves, this should be quite the interesting episode. You ready, buddy? I am. I am. All right. Well, let's go ahead and roll the die. It's going to start on paper here. Okay, so all right. it's going to be a bit of a wash, bit of a wash here. Uh, paper all again. Right, okay. Okay. 
We do have to shout out the patron as well. It is Amber Streak, and my streak keeps going downhill because the stupid dice cam. I have <laughs> this a thing's seventy-five percent win rate while you're actually filming the dice. Listen, I'm not oh, trying to say anything. It's less than that. It's I think it's eighty percent, so it's even <laughs> worse. God. Oh my gosh. Listen, I mean, you should know uh, better than to go up against a paper strap master. I will be going first, and uh, good luck to you. Good luck to you as well. Clearly, I am no Duke Devlin. Ooh, my good God. All right, well, uh, this is going to give it away immediately. Set five pass. Oh, God. Do I want you to know this early? I <laughs> oh, think come I do. on. I'm going to activate Dimensional Fissure. Here we go. <laughs> he got the macro deck. I was hoping one of us would spin this. Uh, okay, I'm going to set one and Heavy Storm is still legal. Are you kidding me? Uh, it's still legal after all this time. I think you would still heavy a dimensional fissure. Um, that said, I don't think I can play around it. I'll set two and I'll pass back to you. All right. It's also very funny because it looks like every monster you're summoning just looks like Stein at this point. So this just is why this staring is illegal, me in the face. By the way. If a judge shows up, I'm getting banned. You cannot use card backs that look like cards exactly for this reason. Speaking of ban, let's fire off a confiscation and see what you're up to over there. Glad I was able to play around that. So here's what I've got in my hand. And they're pretty good cards, all three of them. Okay. Yeah, so this is one of the ways return from the different dimension could still be viable. Obviously, Bazoo still exists as well. And, you know, if you want to play Bazoo, more power to you. But I think this is also good because it's not only helping you, but it's stopping your opponent from doing shenanigans as well. Now, these are three very good cards return can just be an absolute blowout faith is also very good faith is limited too and then creature swap hmm nothing's banished at the moment but that can change in an instant i think i'm going to elect to go for the creature swap here okay uh that's fine uh, i'll go ahead and send that to the graveyard unfortunately does not get banished because it is not a monster if only it did, because then Magician of Faith would be that much more dead. Regardless, here we are. With that said, I think I shall set a monster of my own. I will set a card of my own, and I will pass it to you. All right, I'll draw for turn. Anything? Nope. Oh, buddy, you are so screwed. I'm going to flip I? summon the Immortal of Thunder. <laughs> you are actually playing it. You're I actually am? playing I it. Am. I'm okay. Oh, All right. So gain your 3,000 life points. Oh, uh, and <laughs> don't worry, Alex. Don't worry. I'm going to lose 5,000 when this goes to the graveyard. I just don't <laughs> think that's very likely to happen. <laughs> Oh, I remember seeing this list and I'm like, why the hell are they playing this? And I guess if you have DeFi up, it's not bad. But if DeFi isn't up, it's very bad. Yeah, uh, let me just tell you right now. Um, unless you're playing exactly Chain Burn, this is not showing up in games two and three. You will not be seeing but hey, this card. But hey, it's a second activation of Cyberstein. So that's Ooh. pretty good. Wow. All right, this is a little sussy, but I'm going to equip my Immortal of Thunder with a big bang <laughs> shot. This is... Yeah, ah, sure, that's fine. It's the worst die-fi in the world, but it does do it. Uh, I'll go to the battle phase. I'll attack into your monster with a 1900 piercer. Yes, and it also does give you a little bit of insurance to kind of get rid of the Immortal of Thunder on top of it so that it gets banished. You don't lose the 5,000 life points. I actually do want to think here because I know your hand at this point, and I'm curious if I want to let this attack go through. So he's 1900 from the big bang shot and has piercing. Your hand is return off. You know, it does pain me to do this, but I think I am actually going to Sakuretsu armor it and let you keep your life points. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you still get a sick two for one. I think that makes sense. Yeah, uh, it's not bad. I'm going to set one card. Could be anything, and I'll pass it back to you. All right, I will draw. Ooh, that actually kind of solves my problems for me. All right, we'll start by flip summoning a Dekoichi, and we'll get another draw here. Yeah, that's about as bad as it could have gotten. Yeah. Uh, It could get a lot worse here for you. I'm just deciding what I want to do. Ooh, 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 ooh. Does that work? I kind of like it. I kind of like it. Let me see. So I can go that 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 oh yeah oh yeah i like this a lot okay i'm gonna start by firing off heavy storm oh god 
All right, I'm going to chain Ring of Destruction, targeting your Dekoichi. Mm, I see. That is fine. So I will take 1,400, and you will as well. We might be having some draws in our future here at some point. Yeah, I'm a 96, buddy. Now, the question becomes, do I want your Magician of Faith to flip? And I don't exactly think I want it to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a monster and then I'm going to creature swap. So if you uh, wouldn't mind, I'll take really your helpful. Magician of Faith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was going to be a lot worse for you if you didn't ring the Dekoichi. So um, uh, I will pass the turn on that. Go ahead. Hmm. Oh, that's an interesting draw. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to Rota here. That's pretty good. Gives you access to a majority of the deck. Uh, you'd think so, but I actually am not playing too many warriors. Really? Yeah. Uh, most importantly is in here because DD Survivor is a warrior. Ah, uh, of course, of course. Matters a lot less if you... <laughs> Have that Magician of Faith set. Could get in for damage. Let me check that little graveyard of yours. Confiscation Heavy Storm? Boy, I am not scared Pretty good. of that at all. Uh, you could swap a Roni. Kind of like Assailant. I kind of like Survivor. I think I'm going to go for Assailant, yeah. Okay. Uh, then we're going to go ahead and Normal Summon Assailant. Sure. Uh, looks bad, uh, but we are going to flip summon the Tomato. All right. Uh, we'll go to battle phase here. Tomato, get over my own damn card. Yep, I will trigger it. Now, the question is, which of these do I want? Heavy is such a blowout. It's good. Comfy. It's funny because whichever one I take, you could just play around it. If I take Comfy, you could set. And then if I take Heavy, you can just keep it in hand. Mm -hmm. But there's also only one card banished now anyway, so it's not like... I'm super afraid of that card. Creature swap is fine. I actually think I might go for heavy storm here. Uh, that's fine. I will get in for 17. Okay, I will take it. All right, uh, your move, buddy. Let's see what we get. That's not too bad. I don't know. I'd love to be in your position. You are pretty far up. I'm pretty far up, but just need a way to clear my own tomato. Uh, you're just drawing a single card off the top, so I have a little bit of time to play with here. I'm going to go ahead and normal summon an exiled force. Let's clear off the assailant. That's fine. Kind of sucks. And I, I will it, just uh, pass banished. the turn on that. All right. That is a weird draw. Um, go into battle phase, I suppose. We'll get in for 14. I'll take it. Uh, any chance I can get that heavy storm out of your, uh, out of your hand here? <laughs> it's possible. It's possible. I'll draw. That will, I think, do the trick finally. Okay, I will heavy storm here. Uh, I'm thinking. There's no way, right? Yeah, no, that's terrible. Was a return. Okay. So still another card in hand. All right, I'm going to go ahead and normal summon Don Zalug. Ooh. Yeah. Gonna go to battle. I'm gonna crash into the tomato. That's fine. Trigger my own tomato. And off of the tomato, I'm gonna grab myself a spirit reaper. Oh, sure. Yeah, that's fine. And I'll hit you for 300 and get to that the last card. goes my enemy controller. Trying to get me out of the heavy storm. Go ahead. Was trying to. Oh, you gotta be fucking with me oh i would have won the game if i drew this last turn and now would I can't, you oh I, I can't man. do anything with it oh, oh that's great yes. love to hear it love to hear it i will draw let's go ahead and i have to attack with reaper it's scary because i don't want to attack with reaper but at the same time my life points are also kind of low so it's a little bit uh precarious i have to attack with reaper though i will normal summon sangan we'll get in for 13 sure. i'll get the card out of your hand get my zayborg out of here that would have won you the game. Yes, I will pass. Go ahead. Get a Sidra, please. That's terrible. God, that's bad. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, go ahead. I mean, at least it's a, a monster. So it Cyberstein, could be worse. one time. Can we uh, can we play with Xyz and I can detach and trigger Sangan? Is that okay? If you want to make Zen mains, go ahead, buddy. <laughs> What are you gonna levy air back my immortal of thunder? Good, it's, good it's luck. It's tempting. It's tempting. It's tempting. Uh, unfortunately, it's not really that good. Uh, I'm gonna normal summon an exiled force. Let's just Jesus. sack it to pop. It's a uh, DD st scout plane. Okay. I will put Reaper to defense to insulate me a little bit, and I'll just hit for a thousand. Sure. That's an interesting one. Uh, I'm gonna set that bad boy, and it is your turn. It's fine. Let's see how we want to do this. All right, what trap cards are in the format? We have a few. I just got to be the aggressor here. I'll sack the Reaper for a Mobius. Oh, it was just Big Bang Shot. Jeez. Oh, okay. <laughs> Battle I'll hit for 34. Oh, thank God I gained all those life points. Uh, you're all, yeah, you're, you would be at 900 right now. So let's see Fuck if it matters. Me. Draw. 
I want to push for game here, but I also don't want to play into Torrential. Mirror Force is also a card, too. Oh, it is They're bad. both one-ofs. Right. You are right. Yep. Why did they unban Mirror Force? Mm. Yeah, let's go to battle. Uh, hit for a thousand. Uh, fool. It's fine. It's fine. I do get the Sangan trigger, so it's okay. Yeah. And with that Sangan trigger, let's get... I was going to say, I don't think you have too many targets left because you've gone through two Exiled Force, uh, the Zaylug. You've gone through the Spirit Reaper. I guess maybe another Mystic Tomato or a Dekoichi or something. I actually have like seven targets somehow for Sangan still. Yeah, but how <laughs> it's many It's quite a bit. Good. That's, that's true, yeah. How many of them are good is the question. I'm trying to think what I'm scared of that you could have at this point. I'm trying to think like how I would actually lose the game. I'm going to grab a DD Warrior Lady. Sure. Main two, I will set a monster since I did not commit before and I will pass the turn. Could be anything. Ooh, that's an interesting one. I'm going to normal summon a uh, Banisher of the Radiance. Okay, sure. Uh, I'll attack your warrior lady. If if you just like played me and set a tomato, then it's going to feel really good. Well, I have a set Sakuretsu, so it's not getting in at all. Might just be dead here then. Uh, okay, to the grave it goes. Ideally, that would be the case. So let's see if we can make it happen. It was a Dekoichi that was set, as a matter of fact, and that will still not do it. Uh, let's normal summon DD warrior lady and hit for 20. Oh boy, sounds good. Mortal Thunder now coming in clutch on that thousand life. I'll set and pass. And Can you clutch it up? Zabor. <laughs> Let's go. Okay, so yes, I lost. Yes, it was pathetic, but I did in deck building say, okay, first game's gonna go poorly. Uh, this deck, you've seen it. It's terrible. There's all of it's these not garbage good. one ofs. Out it's of not the board, good. it actually has like a pretty coherent game plan. You just have to endure a single game of Immortal of Thunder. I will say that maybe the first time in the history of Yu Gi Oh! we can say that, that Immortal <laughs> of Thunder has made an appearance and activated its effect. Making me go first, I see. Okay. I need the extra card, buddy. Well, we both get extra cards, so I don't know how much that matters. Shit! <laughs> I need the battle phase, buddy. Okay, battle phase is more understandable. All right, good luck to you, though. Wow, this is actually kind of odd. Hmm. I don't want to play this. This is interesting. I will set two cards and pass it over. Uh, anything in standby? Nope. I wish. All right, let's storm. You know, I had a feeling. So, Saku and oh. Call Haunted. Oh, yes. Get in, my DD survivor. There he is, baby. Treeborn Frog number two is uh, home to rest. Let's set a couple of cards and pass it back to you. He's a now pretty big Treeborn Frog. I wish I could Heavy Storm, but I don't think that will be the case. I will, however, confiscation you again off the top. I did like that the first time. All right. Uh, so my hand this time is just about exactly as good as before. Uh, I'm just thinking real quick. Yeah, that's fine. So it's scout plane scout and creature swap. Creature swap. Interesting. Okay, so DD Survivor could lend itself to you obviously having a macro set. DeFi has to come down first. I believe that deck was playing three DeFi, one macro. Yeah, I don't maybe know why to, they weren't maxed out on macro, but maybe yeah. to play around Jinzo and Decree because people sure. were like still like kind of in chaos return mentality. I don't know. That's the only thing I could think of, but I, I'm really tempted to get scout plane in the graveyard, but I also hate creature swap. So I think I'm going to get rid of creature swap. Sounds good. Okay. So get rid of that. Let's go ahead and now special summon a cyber dragon. You got anything for Yikes. that? Nope. All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and sack him for a Mobius. Got anything for that? Uh, God, I hate you. Uh, I have <laughs> scapegoats. <laughs> Okay, and what was the other one? Other one's macro. Oh, so it would have worked. All right, we'll go to battle. I will hit into the survivor. I'll take the 600. And uh, just scout plane in hand, huh? Go ahead. Uh, you're up, buddy. Draw, that's uh, very funny. That's very funny. Mobius mm. for Mobius. Let's it see. would be very funny, yeah. <laughs> Mobius for Mobius would be hilarious. What other set cards do you play? That's scout plane. What's my afraid of? I do want to start slowly chipping away at these goats, so I will summon a Donzalug. Sure. The battle, what's hidden? Ow. Okay, thank you for clearing both, and I'll just pass it over. Not, uh, not going so hot here, buddy. <laughs> I was going to say, you're doing okay fantastic. over there? <laughs> All right, let's uh, keep the pressure going then, I guess. Let's go to battle, hit two more goats. Uh, yeah, sure. Okay, main two, I will normal summon an exiled force and sack it off for the set. Thinking. 
You want to do that with priority? Uh, I would like to do that with priority, actually. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> uh, to the Grave Ghost yeah. Magician. Uh, uh, I mean, that could have been okay I'm for the I'm scout plane, getting it. back creature I'm swap. So yeah, getting the Mobius it. would have been nice. Getting the Mobius would have been nice. Go ahead. How the hell was I supposed to get Mobius? With creature... Oh, wait, I have Dawn. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh, God. Um... So bad. I'm gonna lose it to Dawn. Spirit Reaper may be limited, but uh, Dawn is a different story. Actually, I think Dawn is limited. I'm not sure, but it's another Spirit Reaper, essentially. All right, I'm gonna normal summon Scout Plane. Okay. I'm gonna Econ take your Mobius. I understand. And we'll go to combat. Okay, so I'll take a thousand here. And I could follow this up with like a Thestalos, then it'd be really good, but instead, I can't do that. That'd be so sick. Enjoy your Mobius. I will. Thank you very much, sir. And, uh, hmm. One card in the back row. All he's got left. What we got going on? I'm going to go battle hit you for 24. Yep. Main two, I will set and I will pass. Okay, that's something. Uh, we'll go Rhoda here. Okay, gives you some options. Okay. Um, hmm. Nothing really gets over the Mobius. I'm going to go for Warrior Lady here. Okay. Gonna normal the warrior lady. Sure. Uh, I'll go to combat and I'll attack your set card. Is a Decoichi, so I will get a card. Would you like to banish? You know, I'm good. I'm actually good, buddy. <laughs> sure. I'll draw. Mm -hmm. let's see. That's not bad. Okay, let's smash and ground the warrior lady. Yep. Go to battle and we'll hit for another 24. All right, I'll pull the trigger here. Okay, so we'll both take 24. That's fine. Gets us pretty low. Mm hmm. And main two. I will set a card and it's all you. Man, this was my opening. Just needed a survivor. Needed something decent. I will draw and it's very risky. I think we have to go for it though. I will premature burial. Targeting? Targeting Mobius. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. And I'll turn. I will, oh, okay, that's fine. I will set a monster then and I'll pass it over. Okay, thousand light points, Joseph. Rhoda again. Okay. Okay. I'm going to yeah. grab Assailant here. Okay. Uh, we'll normal summon her. Is that okay? Yep. And then we'll walk into a sack. And I will mirror force here. Okay. Well, the same deal. All right. Go ahead, buddy. Yep. This should clean it up. I will uh, keep you out of your misery. Flip the faith. We get premature burial back. And uh, that should be the end of the game. Mm -hmm. This will put us to 27. I had a graceful, but I decided oh, not to oh, BM you. <laughs> wow. Uh, this deck is bad. Oh, how did this get top eight? I'm like, I, I really do not understand. It's it, it's interesting because a lot of these Monarch decks were playing cards that would trigger in the graveyard. They're playing the Treeborn Frog. They're playing the Mystic Tomatoes. I actually cited any card that did something in the graveyard. I actually cited it out. Mm -hmm. um, I kept Premature Burial just because it's effectively an extender, but the other cards specifically you have to set up. And if you have a DeFi or if you have a macro, they're not really doing anything. And so they lose a lot of their effectiveness especially in the face of survivor assailant which i think is still limited but that's fine uh banisher of the radiance i think you're on three of as well and uh warrior lady the mystic tomatoes just get outclassed very quickly so i figured i'd swap those in for some more just utility oriented cards i think i brought in like another smashing ground i think i brought in like an econ maybe a mystic swordsman level two to make my road a little bit more live yeah i mean that's i think that could be the theory behind it but uh i'm kind of disappointed i would hope for the first macro deck in the history of Yu-Gi-Oh that we'd get to show off that it was gonna come with a much bigger bang and no pun intended because you're playing big bang shot but mm -hmm. it, it just really didn't deliver uh basically i got to activate in mortal of thunder and that was very funny uh but outside of that uh yeah the deck sucks uh i am <laughs> happy that you were able to ride mobius to your i think fourth no skill brain dead monarch victory uh, congratulations. Thank you. Summon Thank Mobius you. Appreciate win. it. Appreciate it. Oh, it's so it's no skill when I do it. But when you do it, you're just the best player in the game. Is that what it is? <laughs> you had yeah, heavy storm yeah. and you're talking about no skill. OK, OK. You Let's just remember that me game one. Well, it's not fair. <laughs> See, my heavy storm is good. Uh, but unfortunately, the rest of my cards and the, the rest of the cards in my deck are bad. Uh, <laughs> fair. That's understandable. Yeah, there was a weird turn where I had like 
Econ, uh, what's it called? Econ plus Ring of Destruction, and I was a yes. thousand off lethal by like taking and then ringing the Mobius. And I let the Mobius get in an additional time because I was hoping to draw a monster and just win the game off of like ring your guy normal summon. Sure. Uh, and like a Sidro would be live if I kept the ring uh, you know, set instead of just shotgunning it. Instead, right. I drew no one for five turns, and uh, that's just the way the cookie crumbles, I suppose. You did mention Ring of Destruction. This is a card that is newly unbanned, and this card changes a lot because all of a sudden, the threshold for your life points just depleting out of nowhere goes very quickly with this oh, card yeah. now being in the format. It forces draws on top of it. I wouldn't be surprised if by the time Ring of Destruction, I actually don't know how, how long Ring of Destruction stays at one until it maybe gets banned again but i'd be very curious to see how many times if any we actually do force a draw in one of these episodes just because ring can potentially make that hop happen and it happens quite frequently it's not like that's an uncommon situation look how low both of our life points were here if i'd gotten maybe another hidden i mean you could have potentially forced a draw instead of losing by ringing mobius and then that's just how it was and that's ultimately why ring got banned in the first place I but mean, you didn't uh actually pay for the premature burial you're at what 200 here 200 200, yeah, I'm at Pretty 200 close. here just because uh, the game was effectively over. But yes, I would have been at 200, which meant ringing Magician of Faith would have also done it for you. <laughs> yeah, no, um, I like the theory behind this deck, but I think, you know, not playing three macro isn't a mistake. And that's why I think the deck sucks, right? It's like the payoff for something like Dimensional Fissure isn't what it is in modern Yu-Gi-Oh. You know, these days, if DiFi was at three, if Macro was at three, if you were playing Thunder Dragon, you could just combo out of your mind. You could shut down your opponent's Eldritch deck entirely. But back then, the implication was like, oh no, maybe I won't be able to search off of my Mystic Tomato, and you occasionally will get back DD Survivor if I run into a telegraphed onboard <laughs> trick. It's like, it's right. just night and day, right. and yeah. Um, while sometimes it is hilarious and DD Survivor is like a really good treeborn frog, more often than not, it's just a poor payoff uh, that justifies playing like six or seven bricks. And if you look at the way these games played out in both game one and game two, we reached a scenario where I was absolutely out of cards. You had about four left at your disposal. And I think that just sort of tells the entire story of why this deck isn't fantastic. Yeah, what's interesting about old school Yu-Gi-Oh decks is that typically they play a lot of gas and every individual card is so powerful just because this is really before archetypes came together, right? Yes, you're seeing, you know, Mobius and Zaborg, like the monarchs are here, but people are still playing a lot of different variants of these sorts of strategies. They're still like Apprentice and all these different other things and then like Dark Worlds and all that. But I'm kind of pointing to the fact that there's still a lot of staple cards that people play but then you pick and choose what other cards you like to play. Druroid, as an example, that's a card we've played in the last several episodes that's come up, and some people opted to play it, and some did it. And so the individual power of each draw in these types of decks in older Yu-Gi-Oh can really matter a lot, and I think this episode exemplified that quite well, that the biggest issue with running a deck like you were is that you were running into so many cards that just individually by themselves didn't do anything, but if you could set up a scenario where you get the Survivor or the Scout Plane plus the Macro or the DeFi, then you're sort of off to the races here, right? But in a, in a format where Mobius is running rampant, where Heavy Storm and Breaker and all these other cards are relatively accessible and can kind of dispose of a card like that with relative ease, it's it's kind of a uphill battle every single time. Yeah, um, I, I think that... Uh people who are excited about like old school dark world old school um you know macro decks uh, do fall into the trap of like modern Yu-Gi-Oh of thinking oh these cards are synergistic i need to be playing them in a deck together uh because that means that i will have a linear game plan that my opponent right. won't right and the way old uh, Yu-Gi-Oh worked the individual cards were very powerful but had no protection so any monster or any spell trap that destroys monsters or spell traps was just a complete bar to you being able to assemble any sort of combo whatsoever. And like you said, when stuff like Breaker, Exiled Force, Mobius is so available, when stuff like Heavy Storm, Smashing Ground is everywhere, when Sakuretsu armors are lurking in back rows, there's really no 
justified way to be able to do like uh, a two right. or three card setup deck. Right, and it's interesting too, the dynamic has sort of shifted now that Spirit Reaper has been limited, where instead of hoping you don't die to Reaper, you're now hoping you don't die to this card. And mm -hmm. it's funny because the scenario is still the same where you want to have protection, whether it's in the form of just a monster or a Saku, or I think one of the lists I saw was playing triple Saku, triple widespread ruin. God. And just to be just a, just to potentially have ways to that if cyberstein drops the cyber twin that they don't lose the game immediately but spirit reaper although it wasn't as menacing still sort of kind of had that similar dynamic because ripping apart the opponent's hand is just as detrimental cyberstein obviously ends the game but reaper does it in a much more slow and painful way because it obviously is still random, but now, especially to that uh, Reaper's limited, it just makes it like, oh, you just lost your best card or that card that would have brought you back into it or one of those cards that may have been in your hand where Stein just ends the game immediately. But both cards are trying to hope that you have the protection so that you don't lose just completely out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. Well, um, it's unfortunate we never got to see Cyberstein pop off. Yeah. We never got to see either of yeah. us go for it. And uh, we will now never see this card again. Maybe we'll yep. see it in 2020. When someone plays like the Crusadia Thunder Dragon deck that would occasionally <laughs> turbo into it. But uh, I don't think that's very likely. Uh, so goodbye, Cyberstein. Um, may you uh, rest in piss. You won't be missed. To be fair, if you had gone flip Immortal of Thunder in the first game, summon Cyberstein, summon two Cyber Twin Dragons, I think you would have won the entire series of this show for like the end of time. I think that would have been the funniest moment ever. <laughs> it is worth noting uh, pretty much every single turn except for the last turn uh, for both of us in uh, both games. If either of us had just drawn Cyberstein, we would have won immediately. Yep, yep. And that's the, one of the reasons why I think they ultimately banned the card because it didn't really promote any sort of gameplay. Like at least a card like Return from the Different Dimension in your deck, right? It requires setup. You need to get mm -hmm. the monsters banished. There, there's a point A and a point B there where Stein, as soon as your opponent has any clearance just to hit in with something, Stein just ends the game immediately. And so I think it's similar to almost Yadagarasu in a way that it just ends the game by itself, which is why they emergency banned it. First ever card emergency banned uh, for people who didn't know. I, I think that was probably for the better, even though we didn't get to demonstrate it in the episode. Oh, yeah. So, guys, that's going to wrap it up for this episode of the History of Yu-Gi-Oh! We have to shout out our patrons, as always. So, big shout outs to Shadow1317, Sean Alling Jr., Tim00x3, Neo Cypher Slacker, Angeoko, Pony Stark, Ika Iron Fang, Michael Dente, Ole, Mystic Walk, Shotagonist, Rasmus Rand, Dan the Man Hoban, Part 2, Synchro Guy, Cameron Smith, Sylvia Wilde, Joshua Schley, Dolly Wop, Dragon Lord, Logan Thomas, Peter. Gregory, Emil Cohen, Jarvis Martin, Draconic, Thomas Nelson, Indian Taisho, Jordan Coons, Kelvin, Pure Ace, Icky Lights, Jesse Wood, True Nerdgasm, Iron Bladesman, Benjamin Fuller, Brother Paul, Chris Hood, Damage Step, Kalut, Lumpy, Shane Reese, David Liu, Rockley325, Nehru Celeste, Henry Roaming, Lane Rogers, Sky Rose, and Peruvian's Finest for YGC 2021. Thank you all so much for watching the video, and we will see you next time.